Hello, welcome to this lesson from the PE portal. Uh, today we are going to be looking at skill classifications. I've already put up at the top there, skill class. And in particular, we're going to be looking at the four different continua that you can use to categorise different skills, be it uh, small ones, be it large ones, be it fast ones, be it slow ones, be it complex, be it simple. Lots of different categories that you can start to sort skills into. Now, I've just said that word there, continua. Now, a continuum is the singular, continua being, uh, being the plural, is this sliding scale where we've got two extremes. So an example could be hot and cold. That's a continuum. So then a day could be somewhere on that scale, somewhere on that spectrum. You know, we would look at the characteristics of temperature, we would look at humidity, we would look at all of the different factors that, that you know, contribute to temperature on a day, and we would then plot it somewhere from absolute hot to absolute cold. So neither is better or worse, they're just two extremes of the same measure. So when we talk about skill classification in sport and PE, what we're actually saying is, well, we have the continuum itself, we have the category, we have the measure, but then we have two extremes, one end and the other. And every skill that we try and execute or we try and teach or learn, they will fall somewhere on each of these continua. But what we need to be able to work out is whereabouts on that continuum the skill would actually fall. So the four continua that we have for skill classification in PE, we have our first one, and I'll label these in a moment, that we have four, okay? And then at either end, we have a different extreme of that measure. So our first one is difficulty. So I'll just put here in the middle, Difficulty, and skill difficulty is defined by how much thought uh, a person ha is required to put into it, how many different actions are sequenced one after the other, how imperative is timing and accuracy and precision, how much thought goes into executing that skill. That's what, that's what we mean by the measure of difficulty. And we have two ends of the spectrum. We have the first being simple and we have the second being complex. So when describing a skill in terms of its difficulty, we can either call it absolutely simple or absolutely complex, but that's gonna be very rare. What we end up going to do, or what we end up doing, I should say, is putting it somewhere along the continuum between the two. Just like I was saying at the start with the, with the temperature of a day, it's never going to be absolute hot or absolute cold unless we're dealing with the record-breaking measure or the record-breaking piece of the data. So when we start talking about a skill, it's going to be somewhere between the two. And when we think about what difficulty is, the amount of thought, the level of precision, we could say something like a deadlift would be quite a simple skill. Because in terms of thought that goes into it, well, it's maximal. I'm extending all of my body to go from this low position into this high position, and if I am going for the personal best, timing doesn't really matter as long as I complete one full range of motion from that squatted position into that standing position. That's it. So it's one, mo uh, one motion, everything is working maximally, we've got a lot of extension happening at the same time. That's all combining to paint this simple picture. Whereas complex would be something like a gymnastics routine or a dive off of a diving board where we've got some somersaults or half twists or a trampoline routine where we're worrying about so many things at certain points in time such as the takeoff, the first initial rotation, then the change in body shape to change our inertia and rotation to then create the second shape to then land safely. So much more thought goes into producing that skill than a deadlift. So simple and complex, the two ends of the difficulty continuum. Second, uh, if I get the green pen, we have got muscular, I put M, involvement. Muscular involvement, M, involvement. And what we have here is 
how many groups of muscles are being recruited to complete the skill action. How much force is required to be inputted, the contractile strength. How many different motor neurons are firing off and activating however many muscles. And we can either have, I'll go black on the easier. We can have fine skills or gross skills. Fine and gross. Now, fine skills are those that depend on accuracy and precision. And these are smaller, softer, slower movements where the, the, the degree of accuracy is probably the most important part of successful skill execution. Things like throwing a dart, things like a slight rotation in order to uh, complete a golf putt. Now, these small movements requiring very little muscular force. Now, a lot of dexterous movements could be considered the same, so snooker. Whereas gross movements, well, we can either go back to our original one up here, which was that deadlift, but things like squatting, things like jumps, a like triple jump, high jump, pole vault, a lot of athletics are going to be gross skills because we're talking about personal best, maximal effort in terms of force production and application. So we recruit all of the muscles, or as many muscles as we can, as fast as we can. It's a quick, powerful skill, but not every single repetition of it is going to be exactly the same because there's so many moving parts. Whereas with our fine skills, because they're slower and precision is the goal, we're going to get less variation each time we replicate that skill. Think of a professional darts player. Their fine motor skill of throwing the darts, they can get however many times, their ratios are probably something like 18, 90% within a centimeter of the triple 20. That's a tiny margin, margin for error, but they're able to consistently produce that same result because it's a fine skill and precision is the intended outcome. So we've got uh, continuum number one, difficulty, and we've got simple and complex. Continuum number two is muscular involvement, and we have fine and gross. Our third one, if I put it down here in blue, is pacing. If I just put it here, pace. Okay, the pacing of the skill, so the timings of the skill. And there's three parts to this. It's when we choose to start the skill, how quickly we then choose to complete that skill, and thirdly, when do we choose to finish that skill. So when does it start, how long does it take, when does it finish? And it can either be self-paced, self, or it can be externally paced. I'll just put external there. So it's either going to be self-paced or externally paced. Who is the most in control? You or external factors? Is it in your control or out of your control? In terms of the pacing, when it starts, how long it takes, when it finishes. So going back to athletics, Okay, outside of the 60, 90 second timer that you've got to start or complete your skill or attempt, beyond that, you control everything else. Let's take a triple jumper. They control their speed of the run up. They control when they take that first step. They control their cadence of the hop, the step, the jump and the landing. They control when they get out. They control everything to do with the speed and the timings. Whereas a defender in the majority of invasion games, or even the attackers in the majority of invasion games, they're relying on external factors. So if we just take a goalkeeper, for example, in football, and we're dealing with a corner. So that keeper, who needs to try and defend, let's say, an attacking header coming at their goal, they can't control when the corner is kicked. They can't control when the attacker runs and jumps. They can't control at what point the contact is made between ball and head. They can't control the speed of the headed or the headed shot at goal. They can't control the direction that the ball takes. All they can do is respond. They have to adapt their whole skill of diving to save. They have to adapt that entirely based on external factors.
They don't control when to dive. They don't control how quickly they need to apply force based on the distance that they have to try and dive to. And they can't control when they land because the other two factors were out of their control as well. So that would be a very externally paced skill. Whereas a lot of athletics, such as triple jump, it could be something like a rugby conversion or a centre pass in netball. Last one. If we go to blue. Uh, no, right, we'll go for black. So we've got difficulty, lots of involvement, we've got pace. The last one is the environment. The environment. And what we're dealing with here is the level of influence that the environment has over the skill. Now, quite often, an externally paced skill will be, oh, I'll put it down here, no, I'll put it in red, will be an open skill. And a self paced skill will typically be closed. So let me expand on those. We've got a closed environment or an open environment. We're dealing with the variables, just like we said here with the pacing and the goalkeeper. Anything other than their own decisions were what determined the skill. Well, the environment is an extension of that. So things such as the surface of the floor, things such as the weather, the location of your teammates, the location of your opponents, the strategy that the captain decides to play or the opponents decide to play. So the environment is everything that makes up where you are, your situation, and whether or not closed, you don't have to worry about the environment, and you can just run the repeatable, the anticipated skill that you've designed for a set environment. Going back to what we set up here, the simple, like a deadlift, like a squat, a lot of Olympic lifting, a lot of athletics, like I said, they're self-paced, but they're also very closed off skills. Now, a 100 meter sprinter is always going to run 100 meters. They're always going to run in their spikes. They're always going to run with the blocks as a start, and it's going to be a rapid start to the sound of a, a gun or a starter. We could say that that is very much externally paced though, because the runner won't be able to start their 100 meter sprint until they hear the gun. That's a massive open factor of the gun going off and actually commencing their sport. But as soon as they start, it's now a very closed environment because they're running the exact same 100 meter with the technique, with the tempo, the cadence that they practiced for years prior. And that sort of brings me to my last point really of a skill is always going to be a mixture. And when it comes time to assess a skill and you have to categorize it into difficulty, muscular involvement, pacing, or the environmental influence, you have to be able to justify your decision. And it can go a little, long, a little something like this. State which side or to which end you're placing the skill on a continuum, more towards one end or the other. Then, define the characteristics of the skill class that you're placing it towards. Then, highlight situations or characteristics of the skill execution that is linked to the definition of the class. So, if we take the deadlift, I would place the deadlift as a simple, closer to being a simple skill than complex, a simple skill is one that requires few thoughts. It doesn't require much in the way of timing. In the deadlift, there is one motion down to up, which is quite simple. And because all of the muscles are contracting at the same time, there's not a lot of effort towards the timing of muscular contractions. Therefore, I think it's quite simple. But there will always be an alternative view. There will be parts of the skill which are drawing it closer to the other end of the spectrum. So just be careful that you can always refer to the to the well to either end of the continuum. But that 
is about that. That is skill classification within PE. We've got our four main continuums. There are others, but for your course, four are the main ones that you will definitely need to know. And we've got difficulty, muscular involvement, pacing, environmental influence, and then at the either end of those, we've got simple and complex, we've got fine and gross, self, external, closed, and open. So I hope that was of use. And yes, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now.